What's going on guys? My name is Jake. You're watching Meat Sauce. I haven't slept in like 24 hours because like the Japanese say, sleeps for f***ers. No, in all seriousness, I, uh, I work a normal job. I, got, I just come off night shift and it sleeps for f***ers. <laughs> As you've read in the title, the reason why you're here, I'm reviewing these. These are the Sony WIC200s. These Bluetooth headphones are some of Sony's cheapest budget earphones available. They were released in 2019 with a recommended retail price of 89 Australian dollars, which is about 60 USD. Fucking ice cream truck. Why do I, why do I even bother? I keep driving, buddy. You can even find these on Amazon for as low as 49 Australian dollars. Oh, that's about 33 USD. Or even some retailers on sale, you can find these for about 43 Australian bucks. And at 43 bucks, these earphones are an excellent competitor in the budget earphone market. And here's why. Now, I've been using mine for about four months now. And as always, let's go through some positives and some negatives and some other things that may or may not be good by you. Starting off with the good stuff. Number one, the sound quality is pretty amazing, especially for the price point. The nine millimeter drivers deliver bass levels that are clean and punchy, whilst the mids and highs are clear and evenly leveled, so they're not going to give you a headache. These earphones also pump out enough volume that you could comfortably drown out any of your surroundings, whether that be on a busy street or next to a loud baby. You're probably not going to hear any of that as assuming you got the volume turned up high enough on these, but we'll go into that more later. The sound isolation is also pretty great, meaning even at full volume with these things in your ears, the person next to you isn't likely going to be able to work out what you're listening to, even in a quiet room. Second good thing, the battery life. Battery life is pretty sick. It's uh, 15 hours and I can confirm that's pretty accurate. I've gone multiple days, multiple sessions of using these things and they've lasted me just fine. Number three, the fit. It's good, sir. I found that the tips that were pre-installed on these were perfectly fine for my ears. Never felt the need to swap them out, but they do come with three total fitting options. And because the outer shell of the driver, this section here, is so small, it doesn't really cause any ear irritation. I haven't had any problems with them yet, and that's for very long use cases. USB-C, anyone that's been on this channel and seen my other videos know how damn excited I get over USB-C. These do include that, and you wouldn't believe how incredibly beautiful it is being able to charge your headphones with the same cable you charge your phone with, unless you're an iPhone user. Got him. That was number four, by the way. Number five, <laughs> terrible at this. Number five is the inclusion of Bluetooth 4.0. Now we are indeed up to Bluetooth 5.0 is the common standard with newer devices, but 4.0 does a pretty banging job. Latency, in my opinion, has been perfectly fine. The meaning that when I'm watching a video on my phone, there's no discernible or hugely discernible lag between here and there. It has happened a few times where these have become completely out of sync with my video, but that's also happened with other Bluetooth headphones and it was nothing that just resetting them couldn't fix. Inconvenient, but it's not, that it doesn't happen very often. Don't, don't worry about it. And with that Bluetooth 4.0 standard, you get some pretty dang good range. You can easily walk across a gym, leaving your phone behind and still get a really solid connection with these with zero dropouts, assuming you don't have any really big objects or walls between you and the headphones. Earphones, God damn it. I know the exposure keeps changing. I don't know how to lock it on my camera. I'm really sorry about that. What can a guy do? That's it for the good stuff. Let's move on to the bad stuff. While these tips fit my ears extremely well and have never become separated from the drivers themselves, which has happened with other earphones frequently, just pulling them out and they pop off. Doesn't happen with these. I find the silicone tips to be 
ever so slightly too flappy for the lack of a better term. And what I mean by that is if you have it in and it's pushed in really well, you pull it out too fast, this shizniz happens. It's annoying, all right? <laughs> it means that you're gonna have to do this several times a day. You gotta re pop it back in and you're good to go. It's, Ugh. look, it's that easy. And if you go put this back in and you don't realize, you end up pushing it like halfway like that. And you just get muffled sound and you're like, what's wrong with my head earphones? And that's, that's it. Number two, Duo Duos is the charging time. Although it has great battery life, 15 hours, the charging time is two hours. And considering on how small the battery is inside of this, two hours is a long time. Life ending, no. But when these do get low, it's a good idea to charge them overnight in case you're in a rush. Number three, bad call quality. Really bad call, call, really bad call quality. These headphones only feature one microphone. There you go, one mic. Now, what that means is if that one microphone is, is covered up by even like a, a, a collar or it's like turned the wrong way or something, the other person on the other side of the phone is gonna think that you're drowning under water. And not only that, on your end, they've got some weird pass-through feature, which some other headphones do have, but that's generally for situational awareness. These ones have a pass-through feature. During your entire call, you can hear yourself talking and you can sit here your entire surrounding, which is distracting, especially if you're in a loud environment. It's just, it's a bad time. I don't know why they did that. And finally, the fourth issue that I have with these, is there is no active noise cancellation. Now, at this price point, I didn't really expect it, um, but it could be a bit of a downfall for you. It means that, like I was saying before, they got really good volume and they got really good sound quality, but if you're gonna wanna block out the annoyances of life, you're gonna have to turn them all the way up. They're just not gonna do, you can't have them quiet and also have a pleasurable listening experience at the same time. I generally just listen to them loud all the time. Not a big deal for me, could be a big deal for you. That's it for the negatives. Let's go on to the meh, meh, the meh part. <laughs> The man's, it's a weird title, I don't know why I called it that. The things that don't, may or may not matter. Number one is it, they have no official IP rating. I just realized I keep hitting the thing. I apologize for that. Um, no IP rating means this device has not officially been tested against dust or moisture. Now, I put this in the meh section for a couple of reasons. If you aren't a profuse sweater, then it's probably not going to be a big deal. In fact, I've got these reasonably wet with actual water and they've held up completely fine. Wouldn't recommend it, but you know, things happen. These are fine. One very big bonus to counteract that is the USB-C port is covered. My cat has gone nuts right now. The USB-C port is covered by a tiny flap, which does in fact save the device from a lot of potential damage with light splashes and dust and such. Now this plug is not sealed by an O-ring. So that means it's only going to stop so much. If it's submerged, it's not going to stop anything. And without the IP rating, it's very possible that the actual drivers have no form of protection either. The thing is about IP ratings is that it costs money. It's because the company that creates the device has to pay a third party company to test the water resistance or the dust resistance to get that official IP rating. And you will very, very rarely ever see IP ratings on devices that are this cheap. Now, you may say there are plenty that, mate, there are so many cheap headphones on like eBay and Amazon that claim they got IP ratings and all that. Man, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, it's very unlikely that they actually do. Like I said, it costs money. That's not to say that they didn't put things in place like O-rings and fine meshes and all that kind of thing to stop that, but you can't 100% trust their word for it that that's either in there or that it's effective because it actually hasn't been tested. And number two for my man, I personally find the cord, this huge thing, be a little bit long. I find that they kind of look a little bit dorky. It's kind of like a design issue. I guess it comes down to taste. And they're made out of a pretty poor quality material. Like it's just rubber 
plastic. That's about it. It honestly feels like these parts here where the batteries and microphones and controls are all kept and the actual driver shells could crush or crack very easily. Uh, yeah, that, that's about it. If you, sir or ma'am, are after a cheap set of earphones that are Bluetooth capable from a brand that is generally overall trusted, then you can't really go wrong with the Sony WIC200s. If you can deal with some pretty subpar call quality, um, some slow charging times, and other minor annoyances, and these plugs, they're gonna do you just fine. Don't even worry about it. Damn. Well, guys, thank you for watching. Um, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I don't know, if not for me, do it for this guy. You know, look at him. You can't not hit that now. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Catch you in the uh, next time. Peace.